are you past dream time? Like, is it time for you to actually stand up and do something? And, you know, you just have to begin. You have to start somewhere. And when you begin, momentum comes into play and you find yourself, you're no longer dreaming, you're doing. I had a wonderful childhood. I grew up in Compton, otherwise known as The Hood, here in Los Angeles. And I uh, grew up with, around a lot of brown people. Just a wonderful array of people of color. But I went to school with people who weren't of color. Um, went to a Catholic school, all girls Catholic school gray wool skirts from first grade to 12th grade. And so that was an interesting juxtaposition culturally. My Aunt Denise really gave me the love of movies. She really used film for me as a window into the rest of the world. The biggest film that I remember that made an impact was West Side Story. I watched it alone and I remember reacting to the colors and the romance on the rooftop with the lavender dress and the movement and all the brown people because they felt like people in my neighborhood and they were just beautiful. I was a big reader but never had any idea that one could actually make a living, M you know playing make-believe. It just didn't come into the realm of my consciousness as a, as a viable alternative to make a living. But it was that proximity to filmmakers, uh, being on sets and seeing how it was done that demystified the process for me. Up until that point, it had just been magic. But when you're actually watching people that you represent and that you're close to make films, you're like, that guy's a jerk. He's making this film. I can do this. I couldn't get it made. I couldn't get the money that I thought I needed for it. It was odd. Studios were not interested in the inner lives of black women like I thought they would be. Go figure. So I had, uh, you know, I had that revelation and that come to Jesus. It was like, girl, of course. Like, that's not gonna happen. You need to find another way. submitted work before and had never made it in. And all of a sudden, I get the call that you're in the festival. It's like, oh, great, what category? I'll take anything. <laughs> they were like dramatic competitions. It's like, Lord have mercy, I'm gonna faint. The directing award for dramatic film goes to Ava DuVernay from Middle of Nowhere. Ultimately, women have to make movies. And we don't need institutions to do that. And I think the more that we can empower ourselves and know that there are other ways, that we don't have to be authenticated by these structures, that we don't have to be told that it's valid, that we find ways to make it happen, is how it changes. Ladies and gentlemen, Ava DuVernay. I know I'm gonna hear glory. I walk out, they play glory. It's gonna follow me forever, but I don't mind. Listen, I'm here today to, this is Makers, like let's give it a round. I'm really excited that this is just getting started. Really cool, really cool. Uh, we're starting it off with some tremendous, tremendous women. No time to waste, I'm just gonna get them on out here. Um, and we're gonna have a conversation about time's up, cause it is. Here we go, Maha Dakil, Rashida Jones, Melina Matsukis. 
Natalie Portman, Tina Chen, Nina Shaw, and Jill Soloway. This is basically the Avengers here <laughs> in real life. Uh, so happy to be here with you all. And what we're really just going to do is dive into Time's Up, a real intimate conversation about the inner workings, the origins, the future, the intention, so that we can all leave here on the exact same page, so that it goes beyond a cool thing that happened at the Globes or some headlines, and you'll really get inside of it and know exactly what we're doing, right? All right, so what the hell is this thing? <laughs> uh, can, can, who can give us the overview, uh, the log line for folks who've never heard of Time's Up? Maha. 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 Oh, Maha. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, time's Up. Well, the overview and the origin really began when Donald Trump was elected. <laughs> and it was a shot heard around the nation. And um, I like to think that Time's Up is born of a collective consciousness. I think the reason why this came together so quickly and so um, speedily, it, you know, specifically in response to the allegations that you've all heard in Hollywood in terms of sexual harassment. But I think even before that, I think women um, have been feeling very marginalized and oppressed since the, the, you know, this shocking turn of events happened in our country. And when in Hollywood it happened in such a affronting way, we had to respond to it. So um, it, in terms of how it began, it began in so many different ways, but uh, a, a few of my colleagues, Michelle Kidley, Hilda Queeley, Christy Haubegger, a few of us sat around and basically just made a list of all the women we knew who were as outraged. And one good thing about agents is we can convene easily. And so we invited all these folks and dozens of others of, of, of uh, incredibly courageous, wonderful women in our industry to sit and sit around a table and start brainstorming about what we could do. Yeah, I think it's important to know who the we is. Um, so you have agents, you have high pirate lawyers, you have writers, producers, directors, actors, screenwriters, public advocates. Um, the group is pretty large. It is really multifaceted and very robust, really dynamic when you get in the room with all of these women that touch different parts of the entertainment industry in different categories. Jill, can you talk a little bit about, because I know that you've been, you know, um, uh, uh, facilitating some of the smaller convenings. Yeah. But how, how uh, is it to have all of these women in a room together with, uh, and these are powerful alpha women, uh -huh. okay? <laughs> um, how, how, do, how do we manage that? Yeah, I mean, Ava, you know, it's like a dream come true, right? Like, this is happening. Yeah. We've been, we've all, we've all been waiting for this moment. And so you get in that room at CAA with these women around this huge table and you go, okay, we're all here and this is real and the revolution is alive and let's do it. And it's just so exciting. And to me, the thing that's most exciting is a sense of collaboration where there isn't that question usually of politics where it's like, well, who's going to do that and whose job is that? And well, that's not my thing. And we're all just saying yes and yes and what do you want me to do? I got this. Just people are all you know, filling in the space with their enthusiasm and joy for revolutionary, you know, connectivity and changing the world together. And yeah. for me, when I saw the Golden Globes and I was like, holy shit, like, <laughs> we took over a thing. We took over an awards show and it, and it worked. I mean, in a very small all amount of time, too. Yeah. Yes, it's just like insane. It is, it is, and it's dynamic. It's beautiful to watch dynamic. and to feel. Um, Nina, can you talk a little bit about the mission? Just the overall mission. We'll let the lawyer do the legalities. <laughs> let us know what the mission is. Well, it's, it's very simple. It's equity and safety in the workplace. And that really... Yeah. You know, we, we like to say at Time's Up, um, we can do anything, but we can't do everything. Mm -hmm. so, so the goal was to set a mission that really related not just to the entertainment industry, and frankly, not just to women. Mm -hmm. That really cr what covered the cross-section, and, and, and everyone relates to it. And I think that one of the wonderful things about coming out the way we did at the Golden Globes was, uh, or, or really in January 1st in the, in, the, in the different publications, is that we were focused on 
not just our industry. Mm -hmm. We were focused on a group of women who had written to our actress sisters in solidarity, and we were writing back to them. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that's important when you hear the, the log line, it's equity, uh, equity and safety in the workplace, one of the things that Time's Up is doing is to really make that um, intersectional. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, Rashida, if you could talk a little bit about that. N not only being focused on women or even men who are dealing only with sexual harassment, but that's really about an equity and a safety in, in all its permutations throughout the industry, right? Yeah, completely. Well. I think one of the things we were forced to look at um, when, when, we, when we're asking for something is what do we want for ourselves and how do we make change in our own backyard first? And I think the biggest thing is we want our industry to reflect the world. And the world's changed. And Hollywood has got to change with it. So um, with that in mind, you know, I think everybody here and everybody in the movement kind of acknowledges that there there is no change unless you bring every single person along who has spent time being marginalized, harassed, assaulted, mm -hmm. um, whether that means you're a person of color, whether that means you're a woman, with, you know, whether that means you're a disabled person. Like There's so many people who have been ignored as we deal with the long tale of the patriarchy, mm -hmm. frankly. Um, so for us, I think intersectionality is is the hub. It is the absolute centerpiece of everything that we mm -hmm. do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Tina, can you give us, you know, I have to ask you the heavy lifting question. Yeah. Can you give, uh, can you talk a little bit about um, the strategy going forward, specifically as it relates to the Legal Defense Fund? Well, I tell you, the, one of the great things about Time's Up, and I think the reason it has spoken to so many people across the country, is that everyone here in the entertainment industry really knew they wanted to reach out beyond mm -hmm. this industry mm -hmm. and really reach folks who don't have as, many, as much means and mm -hmm. privilege and an ability to speak out for themselves without fear of losing losing their jobs or harming their family. And we have real life examples of that where people who are speaking out are getting sued you know, for, for, for defamation to silence them. Or low income women who don't you know, have enough damages that a lawyer will actually take their case. Right. So you know, the folks here, the leaders who have time's up really said we want to do something. Mm -hmm. And that's where, so I'm a lawyer, that's my background. That's and, why I asked you know, the legal question. Yeah. Yes. But we knew the only way to help, the, you know, one of the real tangible ways that people need help right now is to get them lawyers, <laughs> is to get lawyers across the country. And sometimes a lot of the big firms that do pro bono work can't do this work because they've got conflicts with the big companies. And so you got small lawyers who can't afford to do this for free. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have this Time's Up Legal Defense Fund. So $20 million in a month from 20,000 donors across the country from $5 to millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. It's been an amazing outpouring of support. Over 200 lawyers have signed up, but I will tell you, we've had over 1,000 requests for help wow. in a month. Wow. You know, so the need wow. is clearly there from I all sorts that of number. industries. That's interesting. That's from all right. industries, mm -hmm. farm workers, mm -hmm. hotel workers, you know, steel workers. I had a steel worker from Indiana, you know, reach out to my office. Mm, wow. You know, so we've got, you know, folks who we we thought that was the case, that there are people hurting right now. Mm -hmm. And Time's Up has really spoken to that. And mm -hmm. it's spoken to men and women across the country who need help, who need help getting safety yeah. and equity in the workplace. Yeah, it really mm -hmm. spoke to our need to take action that we right. didn't want to be a group of people who got in a room and talked about the changes that we wanted to see made. We wanted to be part of that change. And it was so important for us to come out in our very beginning with an action-oriented item. What are we going to do? We're going to set up this fund. We're going to invite people who, who all people, not just women, not just men, people who, who fall within the criteria, and then we are going to do something. And that has been, I think, the hallmark of us as a group. We don't want to just be talk. So I have to give a nod to our sisters at the National Women's um, Law Center, which is a 45-year-old women's rights organization in Washington, D.C. We kind of dropped this idea on them <laughs> right, right around Thanksgiving and said, we want to announce it January 1st. <laughs> so, like, get used to that idea and get you. And they came on board. And, it, you know, it was, a, it was a big reach for them, but they've given us the infrastructure, the expertise, you know, to get this stood up. You know, we wouldn't be able to be answering a thousand requests mm -hmm. right now without. 
their assistance. Mm -hmm. So nwlc.org. If pe well, lawyers want to volunteer, for people who are out there watching, if you're a lawyer and you want to volunteer, go to nwlc.org. And we still need donations. So go to the GoFundMe page for Time's Up. And, you know, say, spread say, that around. Say the, uh, the, the URL again. So it's nwlc. Thank you. nwlc. Mm -hmm. National Women's Law Center. Org, nwlc.org. You can, if you need help, there is a button on there for you to fill out a form to request help. If you are a lawyer and are able to volunteer your services, please go on there and fill out the form to volunteer. And anyone who can donate or wants to organize a fundraising drive, the GoFundMe page for Time's Up mm -hmm. is still up there, and we are still expanding our goal because anybody who knows what it's like to pay legal fees knows 20 million is a lot of money, but it's, not a, yeah. not a lot of money. <laughs> it's not Need that more. much. Need yeah. more, yeah. One of the things that I've really loved about Time's Up is a quest to, and it's just getting started, but a real desire to be intersectional. And I say that word again because um, it's just incredibly important if we're talking about inclusivity that we not just have that in a narrow view that applies only to us. So me, as a black woman, I can't get completely tunnel, tunnel vision on the issues of black people and women, I also have to think of native people. I also have to think of Latino people. I also have to think of, of, of trans people. I have to think of other people who are not me who um, need to be included in this conversation. And sometimes that's a push. And Melina, Melina and I work um, on, she leads up our, <laughs> I love the name of the, the committee. <laughs> we have a bunch of different committees in Time Up, Time's Up, but the hottest Sounding committee is the one <laughs> and the hottest, and the hottest, hottest. <laughs> the one that's called woke because it's women of color yeah. committee. Get it? And anyway, so she she gets that up, and we're just getting we're just trying to find our legs inside of the organization. But I wanted to honestly talk about just transparently how you know the challenges that we're coming into and kind of carving identity within a larger movement right. and what the goals are for that committee. Well, like you said, like we believe in intersectionality, and there's th certain things that affect us that don't affect everybody, and we have to embrace our individualness, mm -hmm. you know. And so, woke, stay woke, um, is all about you know making sure all of the initiatives within Times Up include people of color and don't just speak to, speak to women's rights, but you know people of color were the most marginalized group of people historically, <laughs> and we really want to dismantle systematic racism within our industry, mm -hmm. you know, and and educate people on bias and prejudice. And, you know, when you talk about safety, like, there's also racial safety. Mm -hmm. You know, when you step onto a set and you're the only woman of color on set, like, you're in an unsafe environment, mm -hmm. you know? And it's an unfair and, you know, we're really all joining together to dismantle that mm -hmm. power structure, you mm -hmm. know? And I think it really starts with the power structure. You mm -hmm. know, who's in the room? Who's making the decisions? And we're trying to change that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. One thing that I think is so powerful about <laughs> Time's Up, and I really think, I mean, I know that we would not have had the, um, the, goodwill from, the goodwill and the attention from the press and from the public that we've had if it wasn't for our actress sisters, truly. They're the face. And they put their faces and their careers on the line um, in a way that a lot of us who work behind the scenes, um, you know, we can kind of move in, in more stealthily. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to salute our actress sisters and one of our big leaders in that space is Natalie. And I just want to ask you, um, it's been a month. I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> and the reason why this has been able to have such velocity is because of the high profile nature. But I just want to let people know, these actresses are... <laughs> They're warriors. I wanted to talk a little bit about that contingent because I want to make sure people know it's not just the face of a bunch of people working behind the scenes. Like, you all are real, true leaders and architects of this. Mm -hmm. So just to talk a little bit about how the artists and the actors are fitting into the overall strategy and what those meetings are like. Well, it's, thank you. That's mm -hmm. very kind. And um, it's been really incredible to gather actresses because I think something that we realized was that we're usually the only woman at work. Mm -hmm. So like many other industries, we walk onto a nearly all male set and we're usually alone and we rarely get to interact with each other. We've, I've never had, uh, I think Rashida is my only close actress friend <laughs> in the, until now. Wow. Um, and we think you all just hang out together. Just <laughs> yeah. Like, now we do. Yeah, now we do. <laughs> and so the power of just all being in a room together and sharing our experiences and realizing how much we've been 
um, endangered by being isolated, by being the only woman in the work environment, and how that extends to other industries too, where, where if you're the only woman in the room, mm -hmm. that endangers you, it isolates you, it prevents you from sharing stories. So if there are predators, you don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So there's this kind of secondary thing about um, you know, being the only woman at the table or whatever that is, that is very isolating and endangering and how empowering it is to be in a room to be on the same team, to say we refuse to be pitted against each other. Mm -hmm. There's not only one spot. We're gonna make room for all of us. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and it's just, it's really, really powerful. And it's been really incredible. And we have all these new friends. And <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's really, it's really great. I also have to, I'm kind of uh, distracted right now because I see, is there some Baltimore in the house? <laughs> <laughs> I'm freaking out. I love you. I'm freaking out. Your movie. <laughs> Did you guys see Step? This is yeah. Step. Yeah. Right. You, guys just, you yeah. have to see Step if you haven't seen it. This is, you people are inspiring and incredible. I'm, I'm <laughs> distracted. Sorry. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank yeah. you. All, yes. all that by Nana Portman. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's okay. right. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about how are we doing on time? I, oh, yep, there it is. Everybody's very organized here except me. There we go. Um, Not up yet. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, kind of these big events and how we are essentially just hijacking events. We're going around. <laughs> Janelle at the Grammys and, uh, you know, everyone at the Globes. And we're constantly thinking about ways to take these large cultural moments, shift the conversation when everyone is there. But I want to back up because the Globes was such a... Um, it was a, a cultural phenomenon in the moment that it happened uh, that permeated way outside of the room um, that signaled uh, uh, um, um, a coming together of two, uh, I won't say campaigns, but two different ideas about how to achieve equality, Me Too and Time's Up. Um, and who can talk a little bit about the the beautiful kind of intertwining and integration of those two, not in a co-opting of one or the other, but I saw it as a very beautiful side-by-side, -side, harmonious proclamation of what the two mean. Um, can anyone give definition to what one is and what the other is and talk about that moment? I mean, I think about it as simply me too, so time's up. <laughs> It's all of us, so no more. Right. They just kind of connect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think, but they, but they are two distinct groups. Um, one of them, you know, founded uh, Me Too, founded years before this current moment right. by Tarana Burke, right? And that needs to be acknowledged. Woman of color, yes, yes. alone does yes. this hashtag yes. is putting a lot of velocity and attention and grassroots organizing around this yeah. that meets with our moment as Hollywood industry people who saw an opportunity to galvanize. And I was just, I have to admit, in the early meetings where they were like, yeah, me too, activists are coming and they're gonna link up with actresses on the red carpet, I was like, that's disaster. <laughs> don't, I, was, I was like, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, it's not gonna work. And it was harmony and it was beautiful and just felt so good. And it really signals what we wanna be doing, which is holding hands. I'm a conspiracy theorist, I think everything's gonna go wrong, so I was like, this is bad. But it was beautiful. Can you talk a little I, bit about what? I think we How? feel that way too. I think, yes. we were, I think we sort of saw the worst case scenario and we tried to work backwards from that because what was important is that everybody's acknowledged, right? From Tirana right. to, to all of the whistleblowers, it was really important for us to acknowledge the brave people that got us to a point where we could have a conversation about how to move forward so this never, ever happens again. Mm -hmm. And it takes all those steps to get there. And I feel like when you look in hindsight at anything that's happening, it all looks really linear, but when it's happening, it feels like very stop and start and like kind of fragmented and all over the place. But I think for us, like to acknowledge the women who have been working in the space for so mm -hmm. long is part of is moving forward mm -hmm. because you look at the people who have been here for so long and working on this stuff for so long and you want to say hey what you have done has got us to this point mm -hmm. so you need to come with us we need to celebrate you and in doing that we can all work together to move forward because we all want the same things mm -hmm. that's the truth mm -hmm. and I think it's been really painful for people who do speak up and who have mm -hmm. you know carried the burden of this work for a really long time to do it on their own so our job more than anything is to bolster that work. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, have to, I have to say sort of my, 
having spent eight years in the other White House, like that. <laughs> good one. You know, what, what, one of the things <laughs> that I saw was you were too fragmented as a women's movement. Right. You know, we've been fragmented for years. And we work in our silos, but women don't live their lives in silos, mm -hmm. right? They are doing all these things. They're struggling with their health care, and they're struggling with their child care, and they're struggling with sexual harassment at work, all of these things at once. And what's great about Time's Up, as Rashida just said, is bringing everything together. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working on United State of Women, as lots of folks know, and Dylan knows, because we announced United State of Women two years ago here you know, at Makers, and we're going to keep that going, too, and do it again and bring it to Los Angeles, so watch out for that <laughs> news. But this is all about bringing you know, everything together. And again, I have to give a lot of credit to the women of Hollywood who really brought this together, gave voice to it. When people said to me, why did this take off? And I said, it's because people relate to you. Natalie Portman, and that, and they're sitting in their kitchen table, and it's like, if it is happening to her, and then it's, I can give voice to what's happening to me, and then we can protect them, which is why we have mm -hmm. the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that it really worked so beautifully, and it wasn't the disaster that I knew you were afraid it was going to be, <laughs> is that it was so authentic and mm -hmm. so heartfelt by our actresses. Mm -hmm. And on their behalf, I can say, I think people project it must be so amazing. It's such an elitist life, but we've been sitting in these rooms and we're not meeting as actresses, agents, managers, producers, storytellers. We're meeting as, as women who are just using our resources to shine light on the inequality for women, for people of color, intersectional, as, as we, we say that is the forefront and DNA of Time's Up. But I think why it worked so beautifully is it was authentic and it wasn't a stunt and the yeah. desire was to profile the activists, not the yeah. actresses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and Monica, Monica <laughs> who um, started the Alianza Nacional de Campesinas, mm -hmm. who reached out to us and yeah, really that, got this. That broke it open in such an incredible yeah. way. And she's, she said something that was really moving, which was she's like, we're a silenced, and I'm paraphrasing, she said it much more beautifully, but we're a silenced by the shadows as we are by the limelight. Mm -hmm. That the women, the farm workers are told, no one cares about you, you're in the shadows, you can't, your voice doesn't matter. And the women in the spotlight are told, you're the elite, no one cares about you, stop whining, stay silent. And the uniformity is just like, shut up, no one cares. Mm -hmm. And all of our voices matter. Mm -hmm. Like, our voices don't matter more, our voices don't matter less. Like, we all have stories to tell and need to stop being silent about mm -hmm. injustice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, well put. Right. Well put. Yeah. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, um, the uh, Olympics, mm. and when we're talking about things to hijack, we'll just talk about it. <laughs> uh, no, no, but when, we, when we're thinking about what the next kind of national conversation is going to be mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks, or I guess it's a week or something, everyone's going to be talking about that. When we have sisters who have come out and talked about the abuse that they've experienced at the hands of their own coaches uh, with, the, with the U.S. gymnastics team, and just wondering, as we move the idea of Time's Up and elongate that in other industries and realms, um, how do you think tr Time's Up will, A, support that, um, but also what can women in that industry do? Um, this isn't an, an example of how um, the, the, the outreach can permeate different industries. Um, if we use that as an example, how can Time's Up affect them and how can their plight affect what we're, what we're thinking about? Have we thought about the gymnasts? I mean, I think that since we have started and launched, it has become a worldwide Phenomenal. reaction and phenomenon in a way we weren't expecting. And we know we can't answer it for everybody, but we're hoping that the work that we're doing will amplify and encourage other people and industries to convene as well. It's already beginning where women in tech, women in advertising, uh, women in New York are meeting tonight across industries, women in London are meeting. And we, the, the words Time's Up, which our, our sister Katie McGrath and Rashida co-authored in a, one of our very first meetings where we spent so much time just naming it because we knew it was so important to find a name that was gender neutral, that was a response to the moment, and you can't believe how many names we went through. <laughs> I'm going to embarrass Natalie. The spirit of Time's Up really began with the, you know, the next generation right there in the room. She brought her daughter, <laughs> Amalia, to the meeting and only her baby only in true Natalie Portman elegance <laughs> and strength, breastfeeding on the one hand, 
planning the Golden Globes. <laughs> on the other, it really I'm was. I'm sorry, Gwen. I can't do it here. Right do it. She, yeah. Yeah. she almost didn't come because of childcare issues, and we were like, no, this is the room. And we, are, I, I think we're proof of concept. If you convene women in a room and you brainstorm, look what happened in a matter of weeks. Every other industry can do this. And, um, and we want to be there to support and amplify it for, for everyone that we can. We have no staff but for one person. We hope to grow the infrastructure here and to project and, and, and be, hopefully, the Avengers you think that we are. <laughs> well, it's about sustainable change. I think what attracted me in the very first time I heard about it and met was that this wasn't about just getting stuck in the moment, mm -hmm. it was about how do we actually change our workplaces and what can we do to actually make sustainable, lasting change. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, for the Olympics. Like, what can they do to help change and right. protect those athletes? What can we do in all of these industries? To, people deserve to go to work and be safe yeah. and be able to make a living and support their families. Right. You know, and how do we change that so everybody can do that safely and succeed in their jobs and their careers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of the things that I really love and value about Time's Up is what Nina said is that the immediate kind of institute, the immediate triggering of the defense fund was actionable. It wasn't just us talking about up here saying we should do something and things need to change. Like that was a way that it will change. And so I asked the Olympics question because I put that to women out here who are in all kinds of different industries or different um, cities that might not be a major market, people who are watching on the live stream um, to point out that some of the infrastructure and some of the ideas that we're working with in Time's Up are, are there to be duplicated. Mm -hmm. And we're also there to learn from and to listen from folks that are doing it way better and way longer than we are, right? And so it's that exchange. But you know, we, like you said, can't touch everyone. But there's an example here um, that uh, there's a lot of information on the website. There's a lot of information in different panels that everyone's doing. Just to say, um, this can be duplicated in smaller pods, in different categories, different industries. Um, you don't have to have all the star power or the, the corporate muscle to meet together and just get in the room and start setting some committees and figuring out how to get things done. So that's... Yeah, and yeah. Everyone can do something. I think there isn't a day that goes by that I, and I'm sure everyone here, doesn't get a call that says, well, what can I do to help Time's Up? And I always say, in your place, Let's think about what you can do. When someone says something offensive, find a way to connect to them and say, listen, if you pull them aside, and if you genuinely believe, listen, I think you're a great person. I think you're, you're good at heart. But let me tell you why what you just said probably made half the people in that room uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I want to be the person to tell you that. You can do that in your workplace, among your friends, in your social circles. When men ask, and men ask all the time, how can we help you? How about in those rooms where you are and we are not, you be our defenders. Mm -hmm. When someone says something that you know that they would never say in a mixed group of people. You don't have to, you can just pull them aside, listen guy, you know, <laughs> let's, let's not go there. Because when we go there, we diminish all these women who we say we love. Mm -hmm. Or these, these, these trans people who we say we support. Or these mm -hmm. activists who we say we believe in their causes. So there's something that everyone in this room can do in some way. And, and in that way, we are all part of Time's Up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have just a couple of minutes left. This is the speed Ooh. round. Everybody okay? Yeah. <laughs> we got real glass in here? Dang, makers. Really nice. Um, <laughs> um, speed round. Going around to every warrior woman here and asking if there's one thing, log line, that you want people to know about Time's Up and you want people to take out of this session, what would it be, Jill Soloway? 50-50 uh, by 2020. It's an oh, initiative wow. of Time's yeah. Up. And we, we, have a, we, we can be found at 5050by2020.com. And what we're doing is going to our own leaders and demanding that we want 5050 leadership by 2020. Women, people of color, queer people, disabled people, and other otherized people in positions of power. Nice. Good. Rashida Jones. I think that every industry uh, deserves to be a reflection of the world the way it is now. 39% of this country are people of color. That number will change drastically over time, but every person, whether it's woman, person of color, queer person, disabled person, deserves to be equal 
And the way for us to do it is just to encourage in our own industries, however we can, to push this message forward however we can. We're all doing the same thing. Amen. Dina Shaw. Don't be on the outside looking in. Stand up, open that door, come through. I know it's, and listen, as a woman of color, I really understand that a lot of times you're like, oh, those white women, they're just doing all <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> don't, come on, that's seriously, we know that happens. Don't do that. Because we don't want to be in the back when the train pulls out of the station, mm -hmm. okay? Amen, amen. Mahadakil. I am so excited. I think this is a complete cultural revolution that we're in, that we are so lucky to be alive right now in these crazy times because it is upon us as soldiers, as sisters, and with our brothers to change the world. It's happening now. It's happening overnight. Time's Up is a, is a small reflection of that. It applies to every single person out there. And as Nina said, you can participate just by changing your own behavior, changing your own outlook. Look at the businesses you support, our women at the center, our people of color at the center, our trans. Ask those questions, and there will be ripple effects for years to come. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Melina Matsukas. I think um, speak up, educate, and fight with us to dismantle white male patriarchy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Simply put and powerfully put, Natalie Portman. Um, gather, get together with the other women or whatever group you identify with in your workplace to discuss what you can do to change and be radical, be extreme, be the Che Guevara you are in your dreams. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, and Tina Chen. Don't be afraid. Mm. Part of what this, why this has gone on for so long is the fear you know, that has been imposed upon us and the silencing that's been imposed upon us and break through that. Don't be afraid. That's why we're all together. We're all in this together. We are, you know, warriors together. Um, that's why we have a legal defense fund for people who need it, you know, for justifiable fear um, for what they're going through. Um, and that's what we've got to break through. Is yes. Don't be afraid. Don't Amen. Be afraid. Hashtag raise your voice. Thank you very much for having us. Appreciate you. Have a great conference. Bye.